Hello Grade 12s. Join us today as we learn more about mean and standard deviation as we help Justice at his restaurant. We'll join Zinzi as she helps him collect and analyze data. Let's go to them now. Hello and welcome to our series on data handling. Justice, the owner of this restaurant I'm at, needs some help. He wants to improve his restaurant and I think we can help him using some data handling techniques. Hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. Ah, this way, please. Thank you. Ah. Hi, Justice. It's nice to finally meet you. Hi. Uh, can I order you something to drink? Coffee. Coffee, please. Now, you said on the phone that you'd like to find out if your customers like your restaurant. You also wanted to know what they thought of the food and the service. That's right. As a restaurant owner, I'm in a very competitive industry, so I have to make sure that my clients are happy if I'm to succeed. Thank you. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I can get you some information on the service and food using surveys. We'll then analyze the surveys to see what they're saying. We'll also make sure that we give you data that truly represents the feelings of the majority of your customers and not just one or two of them. It's very important that our surveys give an accurate representation of the customer's feelings and not the feelings of one customer. To do this, we must be sure that the sample of clients who participate in the survey truly represent most of your clients. So remember, when taking a sample, the selected sample must be representative of the population or whole group. When our surveys are complete, we'll analyze them to find the mean, median, and standard deviation and use these to inform you of your findings. The first thing we need to do is to decide how many people to include in the survey. The number of people who participate must be related to the number of people who come to the restaurant. Oh, well, last year we had about 2,000 customers for the year. We found that on average, we have about 200 customers a month. Well, that's great. If we take a sample size of 200, it will represent the population of your customers of an entire month. Now, if we try to get a sample of 2,000, it might take the whole year to complete, and by then your restaurant could already be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, that's a very sensible amount. I mean, if you make uh, the sample size too small, that might only represent the feelings of a few customers and not the opinions of the majority of customers who come and eat in my restaurant. So, here is the survey we created to find out what people think of the restaurant and okay. service. It reads, customer satisfaction survey. Please answer the following two questions, giving an answer from one to 10. One represents terrible and 10 represents excellent. One, what do you think of the food in our restaurant? Two, what do you think of the service in our restaurant? Thank you for your time. From Justice, restaurant owner. Now we need to get 200 customers to fill in the survey to see how they feel. Don't worry, I'll make sure it gets done. Well, it was very nice to meet you, Justice, and I'll see you in a month's time. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm here to see Justice. Okay, I got him. A month has passed and we're here to collect the completed surveys to analyze. Hello, Zinzi. Hi, Justice. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Well, I have the 200 completed surveys for you to analyze. Hope you can give me some good news. Thanks, Justice. We'll analyze these surveys and let you know what we find. We'll give you a call as soon as we have the results. Thank you. Thanks. Right. That wasn't too difficult. And here are the results of our survey. Now, we can see the number of people that gave the various scores for the two questions from 1 to 10. We'll notice that 11 people gave a score of 3 for their thoughts on the food. Remember, a score of 3 means that the customer thinks that the food is okay. It's not as bad as a score of 1, which means terrible. Now, 26 people rated the food an 8. This score means the food is good to very good, because 10 represents excellent. Now, already we can identify the modes for the two sets. For the question of what people think of the food, the most common score or mode is 6, while for the service, the most common score is 5. Thus, we can already get an idea of how people feel. Next, 
we need to look at the means for each of the sets, as this gives us the averages. This will tell us the average feelings of the customers. Do you remember the mean formula we used to find the mean of a simple set of data? Here is the formula. The mean value or average is equal to the sum of the results divided by the total number of results. It shows that we just added all the values and divided by the number of values in the set. Here is an ordered list of the values from our table. Now if we use the formula we know to find the mean, it will be the sum of all the two scores and all the threes and all the... Oh no, it's quite a long calculation, isn't it? Look carefully though, we can make this equation simpler and shorter. First, look at the data again. Notice, the number 2 occurs 5 times, 3 occurs 11 times, there are 17 fours. As you can see here, instead of adding 2 5 times, we can just multiply 2 by the number of times it appears. Remember, we call the number of times a particular value appears in a set of data frequency. Look at our ordered list of data again. Here we show the frequency with which 2s and 3s and 6s and 9s occur. So frequency is just a shorthand way of representing repeated numbers. And the total number of terms or customers who did the survey is equal to the sum of the frequencies because each frequency represents the number of terms for that score. There is an easier way of finding the mean. Can you think what it is? Yes, by simply multiplying each of the scores by its frequency and then dividing by the sum of the frequencies. Here is our formula for finding the mean using frequencies. So now, Using this formula that we've worked out, we get an average of 6,19, which will round off to 6,2. This tells us that the overall average rating of the restaurant's food is about a 6,2. This formula is usually used for grouped data. The data we collected from our survey has specific allowed values only. There is no room to give a rating of six and a half here. This type of data is known as discrete. Grouped data can have any value over a range or interval. So a rating of 5,8 out of 10 would be allowed. For grouped data, the values are not discrete but continuous. The difference between discrete data and continuous data is very important, particularly when looking at graphs. If you were a restaurant owner, do you think you'd be happy with the score? This score shows that people find the restaurant's food okay. A score of 6 out of 10 probably means people like the food, but it could be better. Also, as a restaurant owner, you should be asking, I need more information to truly grasp this result. What does the spread of scores about this mean? In other words, what is the standard deviation? Our score of 6,19 could represent the feelings of 100 people who found the food not great and 100 people who thought it was amazing. Or it could just as easily represent the feelings of 200 people who thought the food was just fine. As with the mean, you already have the formula to find the standard deviation for a simple set of numbers. Now we'll see if we can also derive the formula for the standard deviation for grouped data like we did with the mean formula. Each difference from the mean is worked out and then squared. The sum of these is divided by the number of terms. Here's the formula for standard deviation for a simple set. The variance is found by summing the squared differences between the set values and the mean and then dividing by the total number of terms. The standard deviation is then just the square root of the variance as you have learnt before. Now if we look at our ungrouped data like we did earlier and write out each number then we can use the regular variance equation here and work out the standard equation. This is what we get. 
Or can you see that this would take a very long time to calculate? As before, there is a simpler way of doing this. We can see that these differences between the specific scores and the mean appear the same number of times as their frequency. This means we can just multiply the squared differences by their frequency instead of adding them. Let's check this again. If we look at this equation here, instead of adding in 2 minus 6 squared 5 times, as we did in the equation before, we just multiply it by 5, because 5 is the frequency which this score 2 recorded. Look at 5. Just as another example, instead of adding 5 minus 6 squared 32 times, all we have to do is multiply 5 minus 6 squared by 32. Notice also that the total number of terms is also given by the sum of the frequencies. This represents the number of people who took part in our survey. From this, we can develop an equation to use for grouped data that is a modification of our old standard deviation equation. You can see that it's like the old formula, except now we multiply in the frequency in the numerator. Also, the total number of values in the denominator is represented by the sum of the frequencies. Now that we have a user-friendly equation to use for group data, let's calculate the standard deviation for our survey results. Do you think that you could give this a try now? When calculating standard deviation, it's easier if we use a table. It helps to prevent mistakes. We create a table that looks like this. In the table, we'll try to capture all the information we need for the standard deviation equation. The first two columns of the table show the data we've collected, the value or score, and the frequency. The third column shows the difference of the actual value and the mean, while the fourth column shows the square of the difference. The product of the frequency and the square difference is in the fifth column. These are the values we'll need to use in the standard deviation equation. In the bottom row, we'll sum the second and last columns to get the two values we'll need to solve for the standard deviation. So using the table method with the average of six we worked out, we can fill in column three, then column four, and then column five of the table. We'll then add up the necessary columns in order to complete the calculation for the standard deviation. Let's fill in the table. Now we calculate the standard deviation by dividing the sum of column 5 with the sum of column 2 and taking the square root of this. The resulting standard deviation achieved is 1,8. The standard deviation tells us the spread of data from the mean. In other words, within 1,8 of either side of our mean, we will have covered the majority of our scores. Or more precisely, 68% of the people gave scores between 4,4 and 8. Hello. Hi, Justice. Well, I have some bad news for you and some good news. Okay, let's sit. Okay, the good news first. Well, we've successfully completed our surveys and have analyzed the results of people's opinion of the food at your restaurant. That's great. The bad news. Well, the results showed that the average score for your food given by your customers is a six, meaning that it's not bad but could be improved. The majority of people gave scores between 4,4 and 8. Well, I don't think that's such bad news. At least now I know how my customers feel. I can find ways to improve and to make my business a success. But how accurate does this reflect the views of all my customers? Well, Justice, our sample size was representative of an entire month's customers. This amount is large enough to give accurate results, but not too large to take up too much time. Now, if you want the results to be even more accurate, you can run the survey for longer and thus have more customers fill it out. People who work with data know that when choosing an ideal sample size, the sample must be big enough to represent the population. The bigger the sample, the closer it will represent the population. 
we chose a small sample size to save on time and calculations. This means that a balance needs to be found. Thanks for all your help. Now I need to get started on improving my business. It was only a pleasure, Justice. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Advanced Statistics Task video. You'll also find more resources on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.